This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Chapter 11 deals with the subject of groups. Uh, and we've mentioned groups on at least a couple of occasions. Uh, we mentioned it uh, in the work of uh, Elton Mayo, the Hawthorne Experiments, uh, where he discovered uh, the existence of what became known as informal groups of people. Uh, and these groups had uh, what we call then groups, group norms, accepted ways of behaving acceptable to the, the members of the group. Uh, and we also came across groups when we talked about the action centered leadership of Adair, where we had concerns for the task, concerns for the people, or the individual rather, and we had concerns for the group. So, what is uh, the uh, uh, meant by a group? And uh, Charles Handy suggests that a group uh, is any collection of people who perceive themselves to be a group. Uh, which is a great definition uh, because it does, of course, allow this idea of informal groups. Uh, it's nothing to do with a structure being imposed on you by management, a formal structure, uh, but you could have a, a collection of colleagues uh, who, because they work together perhaps or they have a common interest, uh, they perceive themselves as a group. The uh, characteristics of groups uh, is that they have uh, an aim or a sense of purpose, uh, that there's a feeling of uh, who is in the group and who is not within the group, us and them, uh, uh, so to speak. There are group norms, accepted ways of behaving, uh, which have often evolved as a group evolves. Uh, and fourthly, that there's kind of communication within the group. Uh, so, uh, you could form uh, a group quite uh, almost unexpectedly. Uh, let's say I'm coming on, on a particular journey, uh, perhaps on a, on a bus, and the bus has an accident, uh, and maybe people are injured on the bus or something of that sort. Then, whereas previously you weren't really a group, uh, suddenly the passengers uh, on the bus form a group, uh, because they have a, a sense of purpose or uh, an aim, and a, uh, 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 so they do. Uh, maybe it is the pursuit of uh, compensation or, or something of that sort. And, and, and suddenly you are no longer just a kind of a, a, an anonymous collection of bus passengers. You are uniquely identified now as the people who were on the bus and had the accident. Uh, so you have an identity. There are group norms. Uh, you may be expected to pursue the claim for insurance in a particular way, uh, they maybe expect you all to go through one uh, legal firm or they expect you, maybe there's pressure, maybe wrong pressure, uh, maybe pressure to uh, describe the accident in the same way uh, uh, so, so that there's no confusion about who caused it and so on. Uh, and of course, as soon as you have the accident, people who had been sitting there reading the newspapers uh, immediately begin uh, kind of talking to their colleagues and saying, did you see what happened? Are you all right, etc." Uh, so there's communication out of this group, which has suddenly formed out of an incident. Groups in organizations, as I say, can be formal groups. In other words, they have been created by management. And of course, a group could be a department. Uh, a group could be a team of people who are given a particular task uh, to accomplish. Uh, all groups can uh, be evolved uh, informally, uh, that, that inevitably uh, you, you tend to form groups with people at work. What we need to look at in uh, the work on groups is, uh, uh, first of all, uh, work done by um, Meredith Belvin, uh, who looked at uh, in a way, psychological traits uh, of people who can be within groups. <clears throat> and uh, he developed questionnaires and so on, uh, which would uh, assign people to maybe one very specific uh, kind of psychological trait. But more often, people would be strong in a, in a number of, of these areas which are uh, coming up. And he, he was kind of saying that if you're going to have a successful 
group of people which is, is, is liable to achieve uh, the outcome that is required, uh, then you want all of these kind of psychological um, uh, profiles, if you like, to, to exist there. Uh, and if you leave out uh, a particular psychological type of profile from the group, or a, a person with that profile is left out of the group, uh, then, then the group is going to be a little bit defective in some way. So the first one uh, we've got here is uh, a chairman. This is, this is not, when, when, when somebody isn't given this title, this is not like the chairman of the team, or the chairman of the board, or something of this uh, sort uh, here. Uh, sometimes chairman is called a coordinator, uh, so they are. Uh, but these people uh, always take on the, the role of chairman, of coordinating the rest of the group, uh, of um, uh, delegating tasks quite well to, or, or suggesting maybe who would be quite good at carrying out some of the tasks in the group and so on, of uh, promoting decision making, getting almost consensus coming out. There is uh, the shaper. The shaper is quite a strong uh, character. Uh, the shaper uh, probably wants to get their own way. They're quite, quite ambitious and, and so on. Um, and th they could maybe be a little bit tedious to task them to work uh, for, uh, but nevertheless, the the shaper is a, is a gives a, a kind of a push perhaps to the group to uh, achieve what they're supposed to be uh, achieving. They're very determined that the, uh, uh, the the group will succeed and will overcome difficulties and obstacles and so on. A real kind of driving force. You want a shaper, but uh, beware, if you have two shapers, they're likely to knock horns here. They're each very powerful individuals that kind of want their own way. Uh, and there's likely to be sparks flying if you have maybe two powerful shapers of the group. Monitor uh, uh, evaluator is a rather cool, collected uh, person here uh, who uh, judges uh, things, progress, uh, fairly... Uh, objectively, fairly accurately and fairly and so on and there. Uh, this person has got their feet firmly planted on the ground, uh, really, uh, and uh, can be very good at uh, maybe bringing the group up uh, short and saying, well, you know, that didn't go so well, or maybe we're kind of falling behind on that just a little bit. The company worker, sometimes called an implementer uh, here, these are the very kind of practical uh, people. They maybe don't contribute hugely to original ideas within the group, but once the group has decided what they uh, uh, have to do, it's a company worker who uh, is very practically based, really kind of gets to, to grips with achieving the, uh, the tasks and, and so on. A resource investigator uh, explores uh, uh, contacts that the group may have, explores maybe where the group might get help from time to time, whether uh, technical help, uh, explores perhaps where the group might be able to, uh, to get a bit of uh, an extra budget and so on uh, there. They're very good for kind of uh, locating and, and, and kind of making use of um, resources which are maybe needed by the group. The uh, team worker. Team worker is the sort of person who doesn't like uh, dissent, uh, particularly doesn't doesn't uh, want, wants everyone to kind of get on well together. They they're very uh, concentrated on the word team uh, here. Uh, they they like consensus on the on the team. They work very hard uh, to try to get people to um, you know not overstate their case to, to to try and cooperate with other people and and so on. They're kind of oiling the situation as you go along. The plant uh, it sounds a bit alarming uh, here. The plant is a uh, person uh, who is kind of deliberately planted into a group, uh, and we would say in English to ginger it up. Somebody who's going to come in with maybe slightly odd ideas, slightly radical ideas, uh, which they suggest, and, and, and the others kind of have to react against that. Uh, they're, they're put there almost as a source of inspiration to, to the group. Uh, it, it's not necessarily that any of their ideas are going to be adopted, 
but they've made people think, made people, as we would say, think outside the box uh, a little bit. So deliberately uh, planted. We have a complete uh, finisher. Uh, some people are, are maybe very, very uh, good, maybe the plant, maybe the shaper. Uh, they are very, very enthusiastic at the start of a particular project. But then as a the project gets on, they're got the type of psychology which gets bored rather quickly uh, and they're not very good at finishing it off so so you know if you were getting out a, a large report some people are very good at suggesting what should go into the report uh, some people will be monitoring carefully this is in the report but uh, this isn't in the report maybe it should be in the report it's, it's not fulfilling its brief and so on uh, but these people down here, these complete your finishers, these would be the people who would be, for example, really good at proofreading the report. Uh, checking all the spellings, checking the punctuation, checking the layout and, and so on. Finishing the documentation that might be needed in a, in a large project. Great attention to detail. Uh, and again, very, very necessary to have them. And finally, sometimes you will see a role for the specialist in a group. Uh, if you had a, a group of people who was discussing maybe uh, sales systems on the internet uh, and so on, uh, uh, you would presumably be, be quite well advised to, to have maybe a, a website developer on the group uh, who is going to give you some technical expertise and so on. Not really a psychological type uh, specialist. Uh, but this is extended a little bit and saying if you're going to have a group which is going to be capable of fulfilling uh, its objectives well, uh, you need to think of all of those. You do need to know these terms. Okay, uh, so you could be given a description of a person on a group and you could be asked to uh, suggest uh, which of Belbin's, uh, uh, anyway, psychological. Um, types this person is. Tuckman. Uh, Tuckman looked at the stages of uh, team uh, development. And he says, or his suggestion was, uh, that all uh, teams uh, go through this development. And, and a team is, is a, a former group which has been deliberately created okay so management will form you know the the IT development team or management will form uh, the the team of people who are going to be looking at let's say the um, the pay and conditions of individuals and uh, so on there so a group could be formal or informal a team has got a feeling there of being deliberately created and the first thing that's uh, going to be happening uh, here is uh, forming. Uh, and uh, forming is uh, were, uh, it's maybe a slightly tentative stage. Uh, to, to, I mean, should we even have a, 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 a group at all? Um, what should the uh, exact uh, objectives of the group be? What uh, uh, what, what should the, the outcomes of the group uh, be and so on. So it's rather kind of feeling your way at, at the start, this the forming stage. Second, there is storming. Uh, think of storming as a kind of uh, uh, competing for position, who's going to be the leader, who's going to be the shaper, if you like, of the group and so on there, who's going to be responsibility for, for this aspect of the performance, who's going to be responsible for that aspect of performance and so on there. It's getting to know the other people in the group and kind of uh, weighing them up and, uh, and so on. Uh, a feeling uh, here of some almost conflict, if you like, until the group roles have settled down. Then there is a norming. Uh, norming is uh, where group norms are evolved. Standard or acceptable ways of the group behaving uh, and so the norming can be uh, take a little while to, to settle down. How often do we meet? 
uh, what uh, way our meeting is going to be conducted, how long do we need to spend on meetings, and uh, so on. Uh, are minutes are going to be circulated after the, uh, the meetings? Uh, what happens if somebody is absent from a meeting? What is the kind of standard procedures and so on? This is settling down to a method of operation uh, that's acceptable. And at long last, at long last, uh, we actually get output from it. Uh, what Duckman was saying, really, was that these initial stages uh, that we've got here are kind of uh, unproductive. So from here, you're going through the, 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 the four stages like that. This is really unproductive. It's when you're performing that you become productive. And what management can do is to try to accelerate people through this uh, phase. Management can say, we're forming a group to do this, forming a team to do this. Uh, management could say, you're going to be the leader of this team, you're going to be in charge of technical aspects, you're going to be in charge of something else in that, so there's no storming. Management could say, we expect you to, uh, to meet uh, every two weeks. Uh, we expect minutes to be circulated and uh, so on. We expect uh, the uh, meetings uh, each to take two hours and so on there. Uh, we expect everybody to turn up at every meeting and so on so you can impose the, the, the group behavior on it there. Uh, and, and really people are nearly ready to uh, perform very, very quickly indeed. And Duckman said that every time the composition of the group changes, one person leaves, another one joins, in a way, you get a little kind of disturbance of this, and you have to kind of go through it again. It's a little bit of inefficiency here. Uh, the new person has to come in. And you have to choose them, of course. Uh, there's a bit of storming. How is this person going to fit into the existing uh, kind of hierarchy within the group? Uh, this person has to learn what the norms are. Maybe wants to, to influence the norms and so on. Uh, and, and, and this kind of fitting in process uh, disturbs really the uh, the performing. Duckman also uh, recognized that there may be a fifth stage, dorming. Uh, and dorming, think of uh, dormitory, think of sleeping. Uh, dorming is where the group has really run its course, the team has run its course, uh, and it has little purpose anymore. Uh, and he kind of recognized that you maybe have a group uh, which meets every Friday afternoon. And it meets every Friday afternoon uh, simply because uh, this is a group that meets every Friday afternoon. Uh, but, but the original purpose that it used to meet every Friday afternoon has long since gone. And it's a complete waste of time, this, this forming here, uh, that maybe this team should be disbanded uh, because they're not achieving anything that the organization is actually interested in. Teams and committee here, as I say, a team is deliberately formed, specific objectives. You, you want mixed skills. Uh, we talked in Belvin, uh, we had mixed psychologies there, that we have uh, people come with different strengths, if you like. But they should also, one of the great things about a team is that several heads are better than one, really. Uh, you can bring in people with accounting skills, IT skills, human resources skills, marketing skills, and so on. Uh, and the team should uh, perform better than any individual would perhaps form on their own. They have specific objectives which are going to be set. Teams are very practical. Uh, the, the team members will often be the people who are responsible for achieving. Committees, uh, very slightly different, uh, committees are much more decision-making. Uh, the, the committee members are not uh, often or not usually or not necessarily uh, the people who actually carry out the actions here, but they discuss what should be done, really, decision-making. Again, we need uh, mixed uh, skills. So you, usually, uh, uh, instead of a leader, you talk about a, a chair or a chairperson uh, there. It's uh, up to the, the chairperson to make sure that every member of the committee uh, has got a say. Uh, an ineffective committee is where, we'd say, we're dominated by kind of one person. An ineffective committee would be where the agenda isn't set uh, for what has to be achieved. And so, so, so people really don't know why they're meeting. They, they go off and begin to discuss stuff. 
that nobody had really anticipated and uh, discussing. Uh, an, an effective committee is, is where people listen to each other. There's a difference between making sure that everybody talks uh, and making sure that everybody listens and actually reacts to, to maybe what somebody else is saying, uh, rather just everybody kind of speaking almost in a, in a, in a bubble with nobody listening. Uh, another example of a, a, an effective team or committee uh, is where they can criticize themselves. Where they say, well, we didn't do that very well, we didn't achieve this output and so on, uh, or we, we missed this deadline, we'd like to be seeing that. Uh, what size should teams and committees be? Well, uh, people will typically say maybe you have six to nine people. Uh, if you have many more than nine people on a team or committee, uh, the decision making can be terribly slow, the meetings can be terribly long, uh, as everyone wants to, 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 to you know, make, make their point and have their say and so on uh, there. Once you get much less than six, it can be very difficult maybe to get the, the right uh, mix of skills in there, the right mix of psychologies in there, uh, and uh, uh, so on. So teams committees, just, just be aware of the, the, the kind of differences uh, between those, uh, and also be uh, a little bit aware of maybe what makes successful uh, teams and committees. Uh, uh, good communication, respect for each other, everybody talking, everybody listening, um, specific objectives to be gotten, records and minutes to be taken, and uh, uh, so on. Uh, nobody kind of shouted down, uh, nobody dominating, etc. Is, is what we like to see.